No. 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 Please don't. No. No. Don't do that. Okay. No. 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 And anything but that. No, no. Not the comic. Not the. No. Oh my God, Bruce. No. No. Oh my. No. Don't do it. Not that money. No. Save it. No. Oh my God. Oh. No. Expensive cigars. Yeah. Whoa. What's wrong with you? Oh, oh my gosh. I had a terrible nightmare. You were at this comic convention thing with all your lame comic friends and you're running around pulling me apart and taking money out. It's buying comic books everywhere. Your friends were laughing and egging you on and more money came out and cards and money and spending and abusing me. It was awful. <laughs> that wasn't a nightmare. That totally happened. Terrificon, two weeks ago. It was awesome. No! What's going on, comic friends? It's Ryan the Colossus Collector, and thank you once again for stopping by my channel. And thank you to everyone who watched part one of Assembling at Terrificon. I got so many positive messages, so many compliments, so many comments and likes, both on the video and then on, the, on Instagram, on any of the promotion I did for it. Uh, it got a lot of views. Um, you know, view a lot of views for my channel, and I just want to thank everybody who has taken the time out of their busy lives to uh, even watch part of it. Um, and I'm sure most of you uh, watched the the beginning, uh, the intro, and uh, that was kind of the 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 best part for a lot of people. So I I just I'm glad so many people enjoyed it, and if you haven't seen it please take uh, a moment and go check it out uh, if, you, if you're feeling interested or, or, or curious about it. It came out really great. Um, the, all the hard work was very much uh, very much paid off. So uh, again, just a big thank you to everybody who's watched that. And I just also want to say, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, drop a like on this video. Uh, comment on it um it goes a long way to help support the channel support uh the success of the channel so uh i thank you in advance for anyone who is already subscribed and engaging with me and then of course thank you to anybody who's about to so this is part two of assembling at terrificon and i'm sorry this might not be as grand as part one in terms of the intro and the outro i tried to still put in a pretty funny precursor intro to this video hope you enjoyed it i know my wallet is still licking its wounds from this trip and this that's kind of really what this whole video is about is about the the haul that i got from uh terrificon and in and around that trip so many goodies so many awesome things to 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 share with you guys my collection has grown exponentially from this trade. I definitely came away uh, and came home with a lot of stuff. So I am excited to take you through it. There'll still be a little bit of storytelling with this because a lot of this stuff has stories, has, uh, you know, details I want to add to it. It wasn't just a book. Um, so lots to talk about still in this video. And I really just hope you enjoy the stuff as much as I'm enjoying having them. And uh, let's get into that all right now. So as you saw in part one, the trip started 
not at Terrificon, but in upstate New York, stopping by Brandon from Mon Comics Home, uh, JP from the Absolute Game of Nerds and I met there with Brandon and we crashed. We stayed the night uh, just to kind of break up the break up the trip a bit, the driving portion, and also just to hang out and spend some time together um, before, you know, we got into the kind of the madness of, of Terrificon. And it was a an absolutely uh, awesome day and evening uh, there with Brandon and his family, got to meet his kids, his lovely wife, uh, and they so graciously opened their home to us, welcomed us, uh, and, uh, were amazing hosts. Uh, but on that Wednesday, the, that I arrived, we, Brandon, JP and I went to an, uh, antique flea market in his hometown. Uh, it was really big, vast place. It would have been actually great to maybe even have explored more. Um, I wasn't necessarily ready to like really start buying stuff there because I knew Terrificon was uh, coming around the corner, but it was fun to just hang out with them, go hunting a little bit, and I did pick up a couple of items from uh, the antique flea market that I'll show you uh, right now. So nothing crazy, nothing um, super big or anything like that. It was just sort of your uh, classic flea market digging books um this first one is mark specter moon knight number one the first issue in that run i'm not a big moon knight guy um per se but i do i mean i like my marvel characters and this was just a cool cover um and it was a dollar picked it up uh nothing more to say about that just a cool book that uh i'll probably read at some point Next up is X-Men 18. This is part of the adjectiveless X-Men run. It doesn't even have a board. It's just a real uh, dollar bin flea market find. But I love Omega Red. This is a great Omega Red cover. And uh, I think I'll eventually try to collect this whole run. Um, and perhaps even more of the Uncanny all the way to the to the end of it so just something i picked up cover by again can't beat a dollar price on uh, on a book so grab that so then the last thing i got at this antique flea market was uh just this cool 90s four book set of uh it's called X-Men Liberators, and it's just a story with three of my favorite X-Men, the, the three amigos, Colossus, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler. And I, I loved it, too, that I found it with Brandon and JP, the three amigos, digging through the antique mall, or the antique flea market, and I come away with this three amigo uh, storyline. So this is the first issue, um, number one of X-Men Liberators. Then you got X-Men Liberators number two, with this very odd looking crazy monster on the cover, Mutant. Uh, then I've got Liberators three with Omega Red on the cover. And then finally Liberators four with the three amigos. Colossus, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler. Bought this purely because obviously Colossus. Obviously, these three are are my three three of my favorite X Men characters, and the story that's attached to them. And then I just really want to read this. Uh, quick, easy little four book series. Not a bad thing to read. So was really happy to come away with uh, X Men Liberators. So that was the antique flea market. Our time with Brandon was awesome. And then the next day we got in the car and we started heading towards uh, Terrificon. And it was a fun drive. Uh, it was so fun, in fact, that 
uh, we got, I got so deep into talking that I, I missed a turn and we had to, we had to double back. I think I added a good, like 20 minutes to our overall drive just because I was, uh, I was just so in, enthralled in the conversation with, uh, Brandon and JP. So apologize, uh, apologies again to those guys for, uh, making the trip a little longer. Um, but we did end up at our friend Mike from Lunch Money Comics uh, at his home in Massachusetts. I, I always have trouble saying Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Ma anyways, in mass. Um, and he showed us around his room. You saw that a little bit in our, uh, or in my, in my part one video, but Mike also, but Mike also was prepared for seeing all of us, our, our friend group, and he had prepared some gifts, um, for everyone. And so he, he decided to give, or we all collectively decided to let's do the gifts now at, uh, his place, uh, ahead of the con so that he doesn't have to take them with them. And we, you know, we don't have to worry about rooms. And it was just easier to do it there. So, Mike gave each of us something, uh, co obviously comic related, but he really put a, th put thought into it. He tried to give everybody something that, uh, was, you know, linked to something they like, you know, the characters, books, titles, that sort of thing. So he got me an awesome, uh, package of gifts and I'll get into that right now. So one item that he got everybody was a copy of New Avengers number seven. Awesome uh, minor key. It's the first appearance of the Illuminati, the group of uh, the shadowy cabal controlling the Marvel Universe. Um, just a cool key book um, significance to us. If you know, you know. Uh, I really just love getting this one. I ha I don't have it. So nice to get this book. And then he got me a great astonishing X-Men, um, Cassidy cover 20, a variant cover 23 Colossus on there in red. Very cool book. I, I do think I have a copy of this, but when it comes to Colossus covers, can you ever have too many? um copies of a book i don't think so so that was great he also got me this small colossus figure on card in pack amazing um i definitely you know the colossus collection is more than just books it's anything colossus related if you've watched my show you know that i do have a, a outside of the comic world i have you know some toys and some funko pops different things so this goes great with the colossus collection this was actually my um my first colossus action figure that i got in this collection so nice to get it and on card in pack awesome and then, this was the real showstopper. Uh, this is a book that was definitely on my list to get, my my uh, my wanted book list, ever since I did the Character of the Week show on the Codex comic station. Shout out to the Codex guys. We did Nightcrawler. <laughs> it was funny because at the time I felt like a little guilty, like Mike should be doing this episode because Nightcrawler is his absolute favorite character. But on that show, we are supposed to select our three favorite Nightcrawler um, covers. The three favorite covers of the character we're covering. So Nightcrawler was it. And I threw this book in because I... I'm a Colossus guy. I gotta have one at least representing 
both Nightcrawler and Colossus. And this was the one, this J. Scott Campbell awesomeness with Nightcrawler. Such a great book to get from Mike, knowing that Mike's favorite character is Nightcrawler, my favorite character is Colossus. I want it. But then even better is this is signed by J. Scott Campbell along the bottom right there. So not just the book, but a signed copy from J. Scott Campbell. It even came with this certificate of authenticity. So not that I ever doubted that it was legit, but that is awesome. Gave it to me in a top loader too. Excellent gift. So excited to get this. Mike, you nailed it. And I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised. Smart guy like him wouldn't have trouble finding the perfect gifts for people. But this was it. This was a great, great gift. I'm just like super meaningful now because it's also Nightcrawler on the cover. And Mike's, I'll just always think of Mike when I see this book. So thank you, Mike, for this awesome, awesome gift. All right. So from there, from Mike's house awesome maybe hour we spent together there we then got back in the car uh and headed back headed towards mohegan sun got to terrificon and as you saw from the video so much stuff happened so before i get into the the hall of stuff i got at the show on the con floor Mike wasn't the only person who got me gifts on this trip. Um, we never we never said, hey guys, we're getting each other gifts. So I feel kind of guilty because I myself didn't really get any gifts on this trip. But these guys are just awesome dudes. So generous. And um, yeah, so I, I really want to highlight some of the, the cool stuff the certain guys uh at the show that i met up with gave me i'll start with jp uh jp gave me this actually when we were at brandon's so first book is uh a lobo number one and so if you know jp jp's a big believer in lobo he thinks lobo is going to be a massive character one day he also just loves Lobo, um, so it's kind of a perfect little piece. It's not the first time JP's given me Lobo books, so any Lobo books I have in my collection, is they're from JP, so he gave me another one, nice 90s um, book, got a nice little chrome piece on it, love it. And then he gave me this, which I was really stoked about, because I absolutely love discovering new kind of obscure x-men stuff and i had never seen this before and this is marvel 1991 the year in review it's a magazine format uh book but it's got this excellent uh x-men blue team uh, i guess it's not just blue team because gene gray's on there but Kind of some core X-Men with Professor Xavier. Uh, just a really great little piece for my X-Men collection. I have a couple other cool kind of magazine pieces. So this goes really well with those. And uh, yeah, just I love discovering them. Like, and it's funny, just before I, I filmed this, I, I saw a, a, someone I, I met at um, Terrificon, Leroy Lambie on, on Instagram. He posted a cool magazine size book as well and i had never seen that before so that's another one that i'm on the lookout for so uh jp thank you so much again for this book this is a really cool one all right so now i get into a little bit of a, a pickle there's more gifts coming that i want to show off but I got so many books this weekend that some of the books started to blend together. And I had a real tough time over the last couple of weeks trying to remember who gave me what. Did I buy this? Did I get this from someone? 
Did I get it at the antique show? Or did I get it at Terrificon? So there's a couple books that I'm about to show that I'm a little bit hazy. I'm going to credit them to to my friend Dan from Dan's X-Men Comics. But I think some of them might not be from him. But we're going to give him the credit. And if somebody says, no, I gave you those... I really apologize. Please let me know. I've asked around a lot of the guys, so I'm pretty confident that they didn't come from most of them. And Dan was away, so I'm, that's why I'm kind of throwing it at Dan or giving Dan some credit. Um, this one was the one I'm most confused about. I feel like I could have maybe got this at the antique show, but nonetheless, thank you, Dan. <laughs> X-Men 188. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. There is a little bit of a key significance with this. <sighs> but I can't remember off the top of my head. I will put that down here in, uh, as, a, as a graphic. Um, but it does have a little key significance. It is in a decent, decent shape. Um, a nice spine. Definitely a pretty crisp copy. And, uh... Yeah, thank you, Dan, unless I bought it. <laughs> so uh, this is another one I'm a little hazy on. Marvel X-Men Collection by Jim Lee. Just a cool saber tooth cover. And then X-Men 202, Endangered Species. Pretty gnarly Colossus and Kitty cover on there. Then we've got X-Men Deluxe, Colossus and uh, Magneto, 90s books right there. And then this is where I absolutely know Dan gave me these books. Um, this first one happens to be my favorite book in my favorite book in X-Men, uh, my favorite Colossus cover. This is Uncanny X-Men 122, The Trial of Colossus. I have many copies of this book, but this one's from Dan. And this one apparently has, um, I think he said it was a double cover? Or no, it's a production error. That's right, a production error, and it has four staples. So that, that was the kind of odd oddity uh, about that book that makes it a little bit more unique and definitely is a Dan book because Dan loves to collect X-Men books that have, you know, double covers, they're Mark Jewelers or Four Staples. He's into that kind of stuff. So to get one from him with a kind of peculiar oddity to it uh, is really fun. So thank you, Dan, for that. And then Dan got me this book, and I love this book. And I wanted this book when it came out, but it was a little pricey after it after it had already dropped. People were selling the reprints and or the were set reselling the, this book. But I got this actually in with like the corner box, but I didn't get this virgin va variant. And this is Fall of the Mutants. Or Fall of the House of X, sorry, number one, Art Germ, Ileana Rasputin, Virgin Variant cover. I absolutely love this book. Um, I've recently kind of like, this book really kind of caught my eye in terms of Art Germ covers. He definitely has a very specific kind of attractive girl cover style but he does some other ones that aren't necessarily female characters that are also really great and I actually met him at Fan Expo Canada which will be covered and shown in my next video so stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled for that this book's awesome uh Dan thank you so much it's one that I I wanted so you uh got a great book for me and uh, I can't thank you enough I, you said it to me earlier this week. I'll say it back. I'm so happy that you are my comic collecting X-Men brother uh, and such a good friend. Thank you so much. 
So another friend I met on this trip was Josh from Sasquatch Comics. You can find him on IG or you can find him on the Council of X on my YouTube channel. Uh, he's, of course, a, a recurring member of the Council of X, big time X-Men fan and a good friend. Had so much fun hanging out with him on that trip. And he also got me a few books, which was so nice of him. Uh, first off, he got me Marvel Comics Presents Colossus. And this is number 11. So Marvel Comics Presents 11. This is part of, I think it's like a 7 to 8 issue Colossus series in Marvel Comics Presents that follows uh, a Wolverine series that leads into a Cyclops series. But this is also collected in a trade paperback called God's Country that I also have. And I do have this book, but I love it. I lo Like I said earlier, I love my Colossus books. Never can have enough. Um, and I love this series. So thank you, Josh, for that. Then he got me this X-Men Unlimited 38. A little Colossus Kitty cover as well. And he also got me X-Men Gold number 9. Pretty dope Colossus and Kitty cover there. Colossus is looking uh, swole as he should. So, Josh, thanks for these. They're, they're books that I, I love to have in my collection. I like my Colossus covers. So thank you so much for thinking of me and, and giving me some, some stuff this at that trip. Really appreciate it and so happy to be friends and uh, to have finally met in person. So I have a couple more gifts I'm going to save till a little bit later in the video. I want to get into the stuff I got on the con floor and we'll start off with uh, the books I bought. I went digging, I was looking for stuff for my runs. Of course, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm collecting my Submariner run, I'm collecting my Warlock run, and I'm collecting my X-Men run. Those are kind of the goals I have this year, is just like getting those books, the books I'm looking for, high grade books, upgrades to books I already have, Outside of my X-Men 1, that's kind of my, my focus for this year. So I uh, I started digging and I went all over the place at Terrificon, found some great books. So we'll start off with the Warlock books. Uh, this is Power of Warlock number 8. Awesome. Warlock cover there. The th thing about the the Warlock run is it's a really odd run uh, to collect because it's not just one series. Um, the way I'm collecting it is kind of the way it's actually collected in the Omnibus. It's sort of his early going story that kind of uh, ends with his with this solo run in the Bronze Age. But essentially it starts off early in uh, the Fantastic Four that then and then that leads to his cameo appearance then his first appearance is him and Thor uh and runs into those books then he gets a solo series called The Power of Warlock which this book is part of it goes up to it goes up to issue 8 and then it stops for a while and it goes he starts showing up in a few Hulk stories so then there's three or four Hulk books that kind of continue his his arc his story then his his uh new series picks back up a new with a new premiere it's like a a couple years later or something like that and this this book is part of that uh this is warlock 10 so now instead of it being the power of warlock it's just warlock this is an awesome um Jim Starlin cover, it's got Thanos, it's got Magus, his alter ego, his evil alter ego. Then I got Warlock number 11. These are all just really nice, high grade Warlock books, which is what I'm trying to make this run about. I want it to kind of be like 7.5 at the, at the lowest grade 
preferably in the eights, the nines. So um, that was really what I was on the lookout for. Then I got Warlock 12, little Pip the Troll action on the cover there. And then what's funny with this is, uh, this is Warlock 12. I don't know if it's 13 or 14, then it starts becoming the Power of Warlock again. So I got Power of Warlock number 14. And then there's one more issue after this, and then that's the end of that that's the end of that run, that Bronze Age run. And uh, that's kind of the end of what I'm collecting for my run. So this was a really just a nice haul of uh, five books at Terrificon, all high grade for that Warlock run. Then I got into my Submariner run as well. And this book, I, uh, I made a little bit of a mistake on. This is Submariner number four. It's a nice book, looks great, it's in good condition. And shout out to Comic CT Sean, who uh, did the sale for me. It wasn't, it was actually his friend's book, but um, he's the one I worked with on it. I was, I had a brain cramp when I was buying this. I was thinking I needed an upgrade on this book. The black cover, it's early Submariner, but what? The book I actually needed the upgrade on was Submariner 2, where he's fighting Triton, not the cover where he's fighting Atuma. Both are black covers. Just got it mixed up in my head. This is now like my fourth high-grade copy of Submariner 4. So, whatever. Nice to have it. You can always sell high-grade books, but not the book I was looking for, but still, again, really happy to get the sale thank you to uh sean at comic ct so more submariner i got submariner at number 28 do have this book as well but again i was looking for upgrades then i got submariner 40 again i love these marie severin covers all through the run colors are vibrant that's what's so, so great about getting the high grade stuff too is just, just the artwork it's just sings i will i just want to say one thing with this book if you're a seller and you're watching this please please stop putting labels and stickers on the front of books i know you have your systems and stuff but it's so annoying they don't come off as you can see on this one i'm gonna have to replace the bag i just put it on the back. Just put it on the back, please. I beg you. Just a little gripe, a little PSA for sellers. It's better on the back. Then I got this excellent Submariner 48 Doctor Doom cover in that white box border. White's like pretty nice. I mean, it's not like bright white, but it is really nice crisp white high grade and the doom cover i love the doom covers of course in this run the doom covers always go for more than uh, the other ones so I'm, I'm glad there's still a few that i need to get so i'm happy to get this one and so that's my uh that's my submariner books really happy to get a handful of really nice high grade submariner i just realized after filming everything that I didn't take you through my signed books. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to put it ahead of all the stuff that I'm ending with. So here are the signed books. But I got to take you through them fairly quick. Because uh, it is becoming a bit of a long video. So first up, I went to see Chris Claremont. You saw that in the video. Amazing, amazing experience to do that with my friends Dan, Bruce, and Justin. I got my first book signed. I got three books signed from him. I'll show you the first one right off the bat here. This is Uncanny X-Men 124. Awesome Colossus cover uh, where he becomes the proletarian under the um, influence of, I believe, the of Mesmero, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's Mesmero. Um, you might notice that this signature is a little bit smeared. So my friend Justin at No Good Comics said, he's never gonna let me live this down. 
such a rookie mistake to have Chris Claremont use a, a paint pen and then put a book on top of it and have it smear the, the signature. So, at first glance, yes, it seems like a rookie mistake, a bad move. But I think we need to go to the tape for a replay on this. Thanks, Colossus. This is Peter Logan live from the Terrificon replay booth. The initial call on the field was given to Colossus Collector for a signature smear infraction. A real rookie move. Um, but if we go to the replay right now, you can actually see the book in question with this smeared signature prior to the smear sitting on the table. And then it is in fact Chris Claremont himself who signs the next book and then places that book on top of the signature, therefore smearing it. And therefore we see now that he is in fact the culprit and the, the person who has made this infraction. It is not the Colossus Collector. He should no longer be penalized for uh, this unfortunate incident. And, uh, you know, it's just a mistake. It happens. It's, it's in the middle of the game. Chris Claremont's just signing tons and tons of books. So, no harm, no foul. I think we'll just decline the penalties on all sides and just get back to collecting. So, that is it for me, Peter Logan, up here in the Trifcon replay booth. Back to you, Colossus. Thank you to Peter Logan for clearing that up. Clearly, I am going to live this mistake down. Nonetheless, smear and all, nice story attached to this. And uh, glad I got, got it done with my friends. It was an awesome experience. So I'll come back to Chris Claremont signings in a minute. After I saw Chris Claremont, I went and saw another artist writer that I absolutely love. And that is Jim Starlin. And I got him to sign three books. This first one is Marvel 2-in-1, King Size Annual Number 2, um, Thing and Spider-Man taking on Thanos on the cover. Just a really cool Bronze Age book. And uh, as you can see, Starlin signed it right there. He's the artist on this book. Really cool one. I went back and forth on which books to get him signed. I did want him to do a Warlock book, but I didn't have the right one for him. So I ended up picking this one out. And then the next two, I think, were just obvious choices. First off, Infinity Gauntlet number four. This book was made for signatures. Um, unfortunately, Jim Starlin is allergic to certain inks, certain pens and stuff. So he has his own. I had this really beautiful gold pen that, or gold paint pen I wanted him to use, but he had to use his own. So he used this one. It's kind of more of a bronze color. It didn't really pop the way I wanted it to, but luckily this black cover is so awesome that it doesn't really matter unless you're using black ink. Everything's going to pop off of that. And then I got uh, Joe Rubenstein to sign as well because he inked the, this book. And of course, Starlin wrote this series. Amazing, you know, iconic mini series, event series. George Perez actually did the, the, the art along with Joe on the inks. And unfortunately, of course, jo George Perez is no longer with us. So it would have been amazing to have been able to get him to sign it. But... I'm super happy to have Starlin and Rubenstein sign this book. Such a great cover. And then I had to get, you know, if I'm getting four done, I have to get number one down, done. Infinity Gauntlet, number one. And uh, so I got Starlin signed there. I kind of wanted him to sign here, um, but he ended up going there. And so I got Joe Rubenstein to sign there on the cuff in this blue ink uh, to kind of match the trade dress blue. Uh, so pretty cool book, iconic cover, iconic event series. And it was a real pleasure to meet Jim Starling. It was very, very nice and uh, really enjoyed it. Next up, I also got a book signed by artist Greg LaRoque. And Greg LaRoque is also known by some of us as Papa No Good because he is 
Justin from No Good Comics' father. And I just wanted to get a book signed by him to support him and, uh, you know, support my friend Justin. And it just so happened to, to work out that when I got to his booth, Justin was there. And um, he introduced me to his dad. And I, I said, you know, I have this book. Uh, I'm an X-Men guy. So I had to find, you know, something that you've done with, with X-Men. He did this Micronauts book with Nightcrawler looking through a window all big. Really cool. And so he signed it here in silver. And, uh, you know, he didn't even charge me anything for it. He just did it because I'm a friend of Justin's. Totally would have paid him, but um, was very, very um, flattered and grateful for that. And uh, shout out to Mr. LaRoque for uh, for that. And it was a pleasure meeting him and, and being there also with Justin as well. All right, so... The other big signing that I talked about was Jim Lee. And so I got a few books signed by Jim Lee and Chris Claremont. So this first one is the Uncanny X-Men 248, one of my favorite Colossus covers. It also is Jim Lee's first, um, first work on the X-Men, on the Uncanny X-Men. I had this great idea that I was going to get them to sign in yellow and blue paint pen to match the trade dress. Unfortunately, the paint pen didn't really come through as nice as I wanted it to. Thought it would be more vibrant. It's kind of a little bit more see-through. So anyways, Jim Lee signed there. Chris Claremont signed there. You can see the signatures. It's all good, but I just wish they were a little bit more vibrant. Um, but really happy to get uh, this book signed. <clears throat> One of the things that also happened with Jim Lee was he was incredibly backed up. I was on like the fourth session of the day and they were so backed up when I got there for my session, they were still doing like the second session. So of course, when my session got, finally got up to, to, to do the signings, they decided, okay, we got to move things. And it became sort of almost like a, a factory line, like, Put your book down. Jim Lee signs a boom. Done, 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 done. He was moving. I hardly even said anything to him. He just sort of said, hey, how's it going? I said, oh, it's going, doing great. Pleasure to meet you. He pulled out his markers. I had markers laid out for him. He ended up not signing all the books the way I wanted him to. This was one of them. My favorite cover he's ever done. X-Men 5. And he signed it in black on the cuff of Omega Red. I really wanted him to do it in silver there, but he had already signed it in black and it was just like, boom, 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 done, done, done. So I was a little disappointed in that, but still it's signed by Jim Lee. Can't complain about that. And so this last book um, that I got signed is a project book. And this is Uncanny X-Men 273. What's cool about this book is it's, Jim Lee cover art written by Chris Claremont, but then each spread in the book is done by different artists. Um, so Jim Lee's on it, Michael Golden, Klaus Jansen, Will Spertasio, Mark Silvestri, John Byrne, the list goes on. Um, it's not too much longer than that, but that's kind of a big chunk of guys. Rick Leonardi, another one. So this show, of course, I had Chris Claremont and I had Jim Lee, but Michael Golden was there too, and so was Klaus Jansen. So I got Chris Claremont there, Jim Lee there, Michael Golden there, Klaus Jansen there, and then another one that I got at Fan Expo Canada the following weekend but I'll save that for the next video. All right, winding down. Outside of signings, I had two pieces of um, commissioned work done, sketch cover work. First by Joe Rubenstein, who did this awesome X-Men cover of Colossus. Really cool to get an original piece of art by such a well-accomplished, well-established well, well -established Marvel artist. 
he he did headshots really really well um and i maybe should have got him a headshot because it's just a little bit simpler but it could have been really given him a little bit more room to play but anyways i think this is so cool he actually these thicker darker areas is actually done with like this like dark metallic marker as opposed to a black marker which is a kind of a cool touch on it and uh yeah just really excited this is actually my second sketch cover i have done my joel rubenstein but the first time i met him in person really nice guy and uh he did a great job last but certainly not least i met an artist named bobby breed uh at this show i was with bruce and i was with dan we were just happened to walk by i don't know what happened he got our attention we looked at something and he started talking to us something happened but we ended up talking to him for like 15 20 minutes about stuff such a nice pleasant guy really good conversation and at the end of it i was like i think i'm gonna get something done by this guy he had great art and i just wanted to support him and i wanted a cool piece so i gave him this sketch cover and i asked for a colossus and i said do whatever you think you want to do i asked for full color and he gave me this how amazing is this sketch cover i'm just gonna pull it up a bit so you can really see it like that is so dope it's kind of a cool like danger room take but in his own way on x-men 122 which is my favorite cover um just incredible he just did such a good job on it i was so happy when i got it so shout out to bobby breed um just a great artist and uh he does shows all over so if you ever run into him tell him i sent you and get something get get a commission done because he does amazing work all right, now it's time to get into the X-Men. I, you know, I'm not leaving a con without a few X-Men books. And I got some good, really good ones. So, first off, I got Uncanny X-Men 171. This is the issue where Rogue joins the X-Men. Walt Simonson cover. I kind of wish I got it signed by Walt, but didn't really think about it on the weekend um but this is a nice upgrade copy for me high grade uh and really excited to put that in my run it was one i knew i didn't even have to check my list i knew i needed an upgrade on it so this one uh is a really uh, great get for me for my x-men run then i start dipping into the silver to uh the reprints in the silver age this one is X-Men 86. Really, really nice copy of this. Uh, it's crazy, actually, how expensive the reprint books are. Um, they're not cheap. And to get them in a decent grade is is pricey. I got a pretty good deal on this one. Was really happy. Love the colors on it. And uh, the, the reprints and the Silver Age books... It, in my x-men run i'm actually not trying to get like necessarily super high grade but when i can get a pretty nice looking copy a nice higher grade version uh it's extra special so this one was awesome now we get into some more silver age stuff some of the more bigger books i got on the weekend Starting off with this one, this is X-Men 54, and this is the first appearance of Alex Summers. Of course, Alex Summers is Havoc in the X-Men, uh, but this is before he becomes Havoc. This is just his first appearance as Alex Summers. Um, one of the few Silver Age books in the higher numbers that I still needed, uh, so plug that hole in my run. Really great to get that another silver age one that i've been chasing for a while this is x-men 21 beautiful copy um for silver age the white background 
although a little bit off white, a little tanned, it's pretty nice. And the whole book is just really clean uh, and uh, was a really nice uh, find for me on the floor. All right, so I bought two big, bigger books uh, on, the, on this weekend. I had said I had said in my part one, I went to I went to the con floor on Saturday and I just I was digging. And that's where all those run filler books, the subbies, the warlocks, the uh, the, the X Men that I've shown so far. That's when I found those. Sunday, I got on the floor and I really wanted to spend a little bit more money and get a couple bigger books. I don't, I'm not getting monsters, but just some, something that, that really, uh, the cherry on the top of the cake for the weekend in terms of books. So I bought two great books. Uh, this first one, X-Men number seven. This is the first appearance of, or not, sorry, not the first appearance, the second appearance of the Blob, Jack Kirby cover, early, early X-Men. Um, that's the biggest holes I have in my run right now is that, is that one to 10 area. Um, but now I have five, six, seven, and then I have 10. And then we'll, the rest, we gotta, we gotta keep plugging away at. But to get this one was really great. Um, I was, I was looking at fours. I was looking at nines as well. I would have loved to have walked away with a nine or a four, but they were a little bit beyond where I wanted to spend. Those are kind of more targets for after I get an X-Men one. So Settled on the seven, got it for a decent deal. I it was uh it was a deal with also that X Men twenty one. So, um, got them got them for for good deals and uh, was really happy to walk away with this one. So this last book, I was this was the last book I bought on the weekend. It was Sunday, it was nearing the end. I got together with some of the guys I said I, I you know I, I bought an X-Men 7 but I wasn't sure if that was really like the book I I wanted to to end it all off on I wanted to maybe one more big book I had a little bit of money still burning a hole in my pocket and Big Me McFly the comic guy my friend Brian says let's go over to see the Heroes Con booth so the guys that run heroes con were there at terrificon with a pretty big sizable um booth with great books like awesome books i had been there previously and i guess whatever i was looking at i didn't like the price i felt it was too expensive so i kind of wrote them off a little bit um i had great conversations with them when i was there uh they told them they were talking up heroes con which is one that that is very much on the radar potentially for next year. Um, but I didn't buy anything from them. But then Brian was saying like he had great interactions with them. They worked on prices and like he thought their prices were really reasonable. I super trust Brian uh, from a negotiating and book price standpoint. He's got a long, long history and a lot of knowledge collecting and selling he used to have a comic book shop so he went over to the booth with me and we started looking around and I picked this book out it's a book I actually already have and it's a book I'm actually really sad about because I thought it was a better grade and when it came back it it was not the grade I wanted it in I love this book. I love the cover. So, and I, you know, I was looking at it and, and Brian said, you know, Hey, this, I thought, is it, is it really that good? I wasn't sure. I'm a little bit s skeptical on grading. And he says, no, man, that's a really nice copy. And it's a decent price and you probably can get it for less. So 
after a little negotiating, a little talking with the guys, uh, came away with an upgrade of Marvel Premiere number one. This is, of course, the first solo entitled book of Adam Warlock. Uh, I, like I said, I absolutely love this book. I have it just above my head on the top shelf here in a 6-0. Yeah, 6-0. And I really want, I want a 7-5 or higher. I, I, I'd prefer, prefer an 8-something. I mean, I'd prefer a 9-something, but I think this is like an 8-0, maybe. It could be an 8-5. We'll see. I'm going to definitely get it a, give it a good clean and press. And uh, we'll see what happens. But got a great deal on it. And it was a nice end to my Terrificon buying. Walked away. Came home and realized how much money I spent. I was like, whoa. Um, my, my wallet's nightmares were, were a little bit uh, justified. But nonetheless, I, it wasn't any money I didn't bring along that I didn't, that I was, it wasn't money that I didn't feel comfortable spending. So, did I say that right? I don't know. Let's just say all the money I brought, I was comfortable spending it. I guess I just hoped that maybe I'd come home with a little bit more. But in the end, it was all about buying the books, making the memories, having fun. And that's uh, that was the most important thing. So walked away with this beauty, and I'm super happy about it. <clears throat> All right, so this is a really long video. I thank you for sticking with me. It's just so much stuff. I like when I was pulling this all together. It's like a stack of books like this and a bunch of other stuff. Almost there. A few more items I want to show off. So first off, real quick, got this nice little Terrificon pin in my, my swag bag for being a VIP. Very cool. Big shout out to my friend Troy from Awesome, awesome Comic Box with Troy. I think that's his new name. It, he was Awesome Toy Box with Troy. He's just recently changed it to Awesome Comic Box with Troy, I believe. I will put the proper name along here. I don't know if I can uh, put that up there, but cool little patch, little uh, Colossus patch that he just gifted me. Really love that. Um, really cool piece. So thank you, Troy, for that. So you saw this piece earlier. It's funny, I ended up walking, well, actually I was with Bruce from Up North Comics. He stopped at this toy booth, and we were waiting for him, and I started looking at stuff, and I saw this, and I decided to buy it. It was uncarded, just in a, in a bag. It's basically the same character, or the same, uh, the same, well, it is the same character. It's the same action figure, only a little bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I just scooped that up. Just thought it would look cool on my uh, on my shelf. Maybe it could like hold this. I don't know. We'll see. And so finally, I want to end. I wanted to end on this piece because this piece is really cool. You've actually already seen it a little bit in my previous video. I talked about it. We were literally walking to the lobby to leave, uh, Brandon, JP, and I, and JP stopped us and he said, I got something for you guys. That day, that Sunday, he had gone to this craftsman who had a booth set up. I never even saw this guy when we were there. And that's like one of the things I really wish I had done on this trip it's just like paid a little bit more attention to all the different booths because i think i could have seen some more cool stuff but he stops us and he gives us these framed pieces 
Brandon got this cool little predator thing with like two predator cards in it. And then he gave me this. This incredible framed piece of uh, X-Men 19. An awesome Colossus cover where he's just going crazy. And the guy takes, this craftsman takes panels out, kind of sort of 3Ds them. It's sort of, sort of like a floating effect in this in this frame. And then he adds like a little bit of like silver chrome around it, borders and stuff. Like it's so cool. I mean like just such a unique piece. Something I would never know to like search for. It's just something you would see on IG one day and be like, oh my God, I need that. He just pulled it out and gave it to us. Um, it was amazing. Like it was just such a nice little like end note as we're leaving the con to get this like super cool piece that like honestly like this is like gotta be the fit my most favorite thing i got this this weekend outside of like this is like one of the most favorite things i got this weekend or that weekend and yeah it's just ah, it's awesome it's such a cool cool thing just like i said so unique and uh yeah i'm just gonna really treasure it for a long time um, so JP, thank you so much again for, uh, for this awesome gift. Really, really cool of you. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going somewhere special in here. I'm running out of room, but I'm going to find it. Um, maybe it'll go next to my fastball special statue. It's a good idea, right? We'll see. Anyways, thank you JP for this. This is so cool. <clears throat> So that's my haul, man. I'm like looking at the time now and I've been doing this for filming this for almost an hour. Obviously it'll get cut down a bit, but, uh, this is definitely a long winded, long video. I kind of would have liked this to not been a, as long as it it's turning out to be. So I said in my last video, I wanted to do a little bit of regrets or tips for Terrificon. I'm going to do that now really fast just to, you know, give a little bit of information, but try to keep it short so that uh, this video doesn't go longer than it already is. So first off, I just want to say, I kind of just mentioned it. I really just wish I spent a little bit more time, like really just being like very meticulously present going through the different rows of the con looking at the booths i think i feel like i missed some things and uh so when you're there just like maybe before you even start doing things um you know really give it get a good walk around uh and and take a look at what's there uh you know target the places you want to go you know where you want to look for books see if there's some cool stuff like that that craftsman who did that that frame piece like I just kind of wish I spent a little bit more time doing that. Um, so that's a bit of a regret. Um, another regret uh, is not using this more. So this is the VIP pass, my VIP lanyard I got for getting my Friends of our Terrificon, that's what it's called, it's called the Foot Pass. Um, what you get with this is you get three line skips, one for each day of the con. And as you can see, I only used one. I wish they would have hole punched mine. The person who took this didn't have a hole punch, so I had to cut a triangle in it. I didn't really need it on Friday. Because I got to the lines, the busy lines early and got in there early. Like Claremont's really the only line I really would have needed it at. And I was with I was with the guys, Dan, Bruce, and, and, and Justin. And it wasn't a very long line. So I just kind of, and it was the first thing I'd done uh, that day. So I just waited the 
40 minutes or whatever it was, half an hour, hung out with the guys and got, got my signings done. Oh my gosh, I haven't done the signings. This is so long. <sighs> Saturday, I used it on Jim Lee line. I wish I used it earlier. I did actually sit in line for a while, and then I used it. I should have really asked up front, like, when can I use this? How can I use it? And then got that information. It was a little chaotic around Jim Lee. Um, so, I don't know. I didn't really get the information. I was, wasn't sure where to get the information. Uh, luckily though, I was able to use it and it saved me a little bit of time. Um, and then Sunday I was leaving. So that leads me into my next regret is I kind of wish I stayed an extra day. Uh, I wish I could have just did the whole Sunday, hung out. Some of the guys were still there overnight. Uh, I would have liked to have just spent one more night. It, it goes so fast, like take the time. Um, so next time. I'm doing the full Thursday to Monday. And, uh, of course, you know, cost comes into that. You got to pay for the hotel and all that sort of thing. But I just think it's worth it. And I want to really maximize my time at the con. Uh, another big regret. I should have gotten orthotic shoes ahead of that event. My feet were annihilated. Um, so much pain. <laughs> So I did get insoles like Dr. Scholl's and stuff. They just did not do the trick. Uh, I, I mean, it's a personal thing. I know I need to get some proper like foot support shoes, that, all that sort of thing, orthotics. But it is, it is hard on your feet no matter who you are, no matter your size, weight, height, all that sort of thing. Um, I heard people all, all over the place talking about how hard it was on their feet how tiring it was so really good shoes good insoles all that sort of thing is a, a pro tip for you and um yeah i mean just watch your energy levels while you're there make sure you're eating when you need to eat and you're drinking water and doing all those things because it is a grind you know you're 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 at, at the con on your feet all day then you're you know, drinking at night, you're eating pretty unhealthy food a lot. So like anywhere where you can like try to find a way to maybe fuel your body with a little extra sleep or a little more of a healthy snack or something like that. I think that would go a long way. Um, but yeah, and then just like be rested up when you get, when you, before you get to the con and, uh, and then maybe even give yourself a day once you get home off from work or whatever, if you can take the time off to, uh, to just re recoup a little bit, get, get a lot of sleep. That's a good tip as well. Um, another tip is just like, look for opportunities to meet people. Uh, you know, and, and like, if you don't know a lot of people in the community, try to, and you're, you're planning on going and you want to know people, Try to engage with them online ahead of time and talk to them. Uh, find out that they're going to Terrificon. Tell them you're going to Terrificon. You know, just open up the the dialogue with people so that uh, when you get there, you you know, you can talk to people. You can say, hey, it's me from Instagram, whatever. You have people to hang out with. It's not hard to find people to hang out with, but it, it goes a long way if you already have some built-in connections and know, know some people that are going to be there. Um, check out all the different restaurants, great places to eat there. Uh, stay in the sky tower, uh, as opposed to the earth tower. Sky tower is just a little bit nicer. Again, if you can afford it, if it's within your, your, your budget. Um, and if you're with friends, try to see if you can get on like the same floor or at least within a, within the same floors, because the, the floors are, the elevators are actually kind of split on that tower. So like if you're anything below the 21st floor, you're in one elevator and then anything above the 21st floor, you're in an opposite elevator. So to get to an, someone on the low, on the other elevator, you got to go all the way down and then you got to go over to theirs. And if you don't have a key, you can't get on the elevator. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so 
try to see a checkout like or or find out where your friends what floor your friends are staying on or whatever and see if you can kind of work your way in when i got there i i asked for a high room with a good view and i ended up on an, another elevator and most of the other guys were on the other one so it just created a little bit of uh inconvenience so just something to to think about there um one regret i also have is just like not setting some time aside to do some panels there you know these creators like someone like claremont might be doing a, a a panel there talking about stuff i didn't take time to do that again i was tired when i had an opportunity to get off my feet i took it i was with a lot of people um so I don't regret doing all that, but I would have liked to have checked out panels. Justin from No Good Comics told me oh, I should try and check them out, and I didn't. So uh, that's a, a regret. I would like to do that next time. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe... Oh, shoot. My lights went out. Well, I will leave it at that. Uh, set the mood for a fond... Farewell to Terrificon. Thank you so much for sitting through this video. Uh, I know it was long. I'm kind of rambled sometimes. But I did really want to uh, just show off all the books I got. And uh, I really appreciate you coming along for the ride with me. Um, again, keep an eye out for my Fan Expo Toronto video. Keep an eye out for the Council of X coming up this Friday and if you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing to the channel would really appreciate your uh, support and if you haven't already why don't you check out Assemble at Terrificon part one the first video of my Terrificon videos and then why don't you also check out my most recent top five undervalued video and until the next time keep collecting